Y jugando para el equipo hielo. ¡Que lo detenga! ¡Que venga la policía! ¡El asesino de coreanos, Corsa! Buena suerte, caballeros. Ooh, these guys looking ready to fight some 1v1s. I managed to actually get rid of the Vicio finally and have a great upgrade. Cyrene, welcome to the 1v1s. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be alongside you, Crepo. I gotta introduce you as well. Slide that in there. But yeah. In case people <laughs> by this time still don't know who we are. Uh, did you get to catch all the 1v1s yesterday? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. I was very surprised at the fact that both Doublelift and Bjergsen got knocked out the finals yep. from last year. I got to catch up with Doublelift a little bit afterwards, and he was saying like they didn't practice too much for it. Him and Bjergsen both kind of took it a little bit easy, but as soon as they lost, they were like, damn, we should have taken this seriously. And that's yeah. what you have on the luxury of day two. They I got was to see everything. Talking to Doublelift this morning as well, at the same time, I was like, bro, what went wrong? Like, you did everything wrong in that all-in, and he basically said the same thing. I don't think I could have played it any worse in that particular situation. Basically, according to him, what happened was he was going to win 100% on the CS. Always, huh? But he wanted to fight like a man. And, well, he died like one as well. <laughs> and uh, gave the free win over. So yeah. hopefully, today, people that are actually ahead on CS will just keep on winning. Yeah. And the fact that we also see uh, you know, people go for those bloody kills when you could have just ended it that yeah. way so easily. But the picks, I want to see how they adapt. Because we are seeing things like Twitch, like LeBlanc, some people pulling out Jace. Varus is becoming a big pick. The Draven as well is actually Celebrity's big pick. He's known for things off meta like Draven, Lucian, and Kalista. So those may be banned against Celebrity. Yeah, I'm definitely loving the Varus picks because there's two ways that you can just trade on champions through minions with the Q and the E that you can actually just get the double value off. It's a great champion that gets to 100 CS. And when your opponent gets a little cocky, you just pop it in the head with the ulti and then you just win that trade. Yeah, Varus has been incredibly good. Able to like chunk people out as well. LeBlanc, Caitlyn. Caitlyn's big one on the ban category, number one right now. Syndra, you expect it to be off the table as well? I mean, we're looking at Kennen, Nasus, just yeah, like this. Yeah, there's, there's going to be something up. There's a few too many picks available, but it all depends what style they want to play. There is a little bit of rock, paper, scissors going on. Obviously, it also depends on kind of what runes these guys are running. We're going to try and follow that a little bit more closely. That is something we maybe skipped over too much yesterday. And just have a bit of insight of like Ooh. why these players are making these decisions because it is as Mithy is saying, sometimes they're just in the moment and they're also not thinking straight all the time because they're so busy with CS. Yeah, I actually remember when we had had the 1v1 mode actually on live. Every time I played it, like you play a ton of League of Legends, but you actually feel your heart in your chest because every little thing you do, you don't have people to back you up. You make one mistake. Can't blame your team. Yeah, you can't blame your team. It's all on me at that point. You are your Thanks. team. Thanks. <laughs> but I'll mess it up and then you know, the guy, it's just purely outplay, outskill, and they can punish you really hard for the next two minutes off of one mistake. And again, if you're wondering why these hovers happen until the end, despite it being blind pick, it's because these players are sitting right next to the screen where it's <laughs> happening. They can look up and look at the player camps, and look for reactions, and look at the last second yeah. champion switches here. Karsa peaked. I don't think Celebrity actually peaked. No. And yeah, Celebrity's going to go with the Lucian that he's known for, and Karsa's going to go with the Rengar. Yeah. Jungle pick. That is a matchup where you have to stay away from the brushes. I feel like Rengar will never win it unless he all ends at level 3. So this is basically survive with super defensive summoner spells. And this is such a strange uh, thing on the Rift, or I guess on the Howling Abyss, is because you want brush control, but at 2 minutes 15 seconds, that's when the relics spawn. And then every minute 15 seconds after that, they respawn. So the Rengar has to play between actually controlling yeah. the brushes on the top side and then eventually being like, okay, it's about to come up. I got to get the bottom side. So of it's that. kind of a, a cascading effect where you get brush control. Hopefully that gives you minion wave control. Yeah. And then once the wave is kind of your ally, you switch over to the other side to get the right timing for those relics. But that's extremely hard to track while trying to CS dodge Lucian Qs, and not die in the process. Yeah, it's incredibly hard. You have to keep track of all that. Nobody's keeping anything for you. And you have the other guy in your ear. <laughs> yeah. He talks and match it. <laughs> Players actually haven't really been using it too much. I want to see more like, uh, especially from support mains, because they're so used to like not having to do much in the game. So mental warfare, like you're already disadvantaged. You can't CS very well. You're going up against the bad player. So I really hope that uh, Mata later on when he goes up against Faker starts oh. using that. And I know a lot of these guys take it very seriously. You're talking about Mata against Faker, he really, really wants to actually win that. He loves the Howling Abyss. He loves being able to play on it. Loves a -Ramp. But I'm looking at Celebrity and the GPL guys are 2-0 and in the actual one-on-ones uh, -on from yesterday. Yeah, an interesting start as well here. Karsa looking for an item upgrade early because he doesn't go for the conventional Dorans, which means he sacrifices power early for a little bit more sustain. But it gives him a little bit of an upgrade if he does get a first back. That's also good. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we had a quick look at what they're running runes-wise. Basically, 15 armor on both, and then Celebrity is going, obviously, a little bit more into the attack speed, but there is just raw AD paired with that armor on the side of Karsa. Karsa is going all in. Brutal early game stats, nothing scaling, obviously, since it's a 1v1. And the fact that he also just gets healing and he's able to actually move around a little bit faster when he uses the W, that he'll have a good, good bit of sustain. Yep. But it won't be off of actually those auto attacks. And then obviously Warlords versus Thunderlords here. With Karsa uh, running with Thunderlords, okay. he really wants to go for those spikes. That's super risky because yep. you can see everything that Celebrity does to him in terms of damage is going to stick. Yep. There's no way for him to get it back. And I love those health bars at the top, actually. That, that's, <laughs> that's sick. Sorry. We oh, pipped our all overlay. In. That's Karsa. Basically, he wants to jump to the minions and he then wants extend the trade. He wants control here to push him out before he hits level two. Oh, it's all. He's going in. He needs a one. That's it. Man. We can analyze these matchups all you want, but if you don't stay away from a level 2 Rengar, you're just going to die. Yeah, jumped through the bush, had complete control of the spot on Reckless's face. It's my turn already, man. Ah, I mean, Karsa, he's known for taking down Faker, so killing celebrities isn't something he's new at. We were just done leaning over.